So you want to trade futures on TradingView. Welcome on into today's video. We're going to be covering exactly how to do that here in this video. So right now we are looking at a TradingView layout where we're looking at SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. This is not looking at futures, but what we're going to do is we're going to pull up uh, the micro S&P 500 futures. We're going to pull up a contract that we can trade. And then we're going to show you guys how to go ahead and do it. You can, of course, trade the minis. You can trade the NASDAQ. You can trade whatever you want to trade. But we're going to go through an example of trading the micros. So over here, I have a list of different futures that I can pull up. If I take a look at this and I type in, or I go up to the search bar on TradingView, and I just type in micro S&P futures, and I scroll down, here it is. On CME, we have the micro E-mini S&P 500 index futures, MES. Click on that. It's going to pull up MES one exclamation point. This is not a product that you're actually going to be able to trade with a broker on TradingView. I believe if we go ahead and actually pull up the paper account, you'll be able to trade this and I'll show you how to do that really quick. And then I'll show you how to do it with a brokerage demo account for the purpose of this video. So right now I'm logged into a broker demo account. I'm going to pull up, I'm going to log out of this account. I'm going to then open up a or go back into the paper trading account on TradingView. If you guys don't know how to do this, we have a video walking you through the platform, how it works, basics. But for the most part, if you're familiar with trading stocks and TradingView uh, and paper trading in general, it's pretty straightforward. Click on connect. I'm going to open up my paper trading account. Boom. I got about $10,000 in the account. I can reset that if I want, whatever I want to do. I am logged into my paper trading account here on TradingView. And of course, for how to get to this point, I'll go down on the bottom of my screen. There is a trading panel option. That is the option. I pop that open, click on this little uh, expand feature right here, expand it, and I can go to paper trading, log out if I want to log out, or then log into a different broker or log back into paper trading. Okay, that's how it's done. Now that I have this open and I'm looking at these micro e-mini S&P 500 futures with the exclamation point, I might think, okay, let me go trade this. I open up one of the options on the right hand side, the order panel or the DOM. In this case, DOM is kind of like a price ladder like other platforms may have. If I open this up and I decide to go trade this, I go with one unit, I go and try to enter my order in right here. You'll see that it will have a buy, boom, it'll add me in and now I'm in on my paper trading account. The thing is, you probably won't be able to go ahead and do this with a brokerage platform because this is a paper trading platform that we're using or the, our paper trading account where we are looking at actually trading on an actual broker with real money. We need to have an expiration on the contracts. We can't just be trading like random futures. This is a continuous contract. We need to be actually trading an expiration contract. So that's what we're going to have to go ahead and do. Let's say I want to exit this. I'm going to go sell market, exit out of that position. Super easy to do here when it comes to using the DOM. It's like, it takes two seconds, right? At the end of the day, X out of this, let's now pull up a contract. So if I go back here, I have, it, I have one pulled up in this example, these expire out, or these are December expirations, right? 2022. MES is the micro e mini futures I wanna trade, but I need a contract. I gotta go to this drop down menu right here. And now I'm gonna have multiple different contracts that I can actually pick from and trade. So I'm gonna to go to the December 2022s, that's the nearest expiration from when I'm filming this video and pull those up, which I then have added to my watch list where I can add that to a list. So I can easily go to that on my trading view, watch list platform, whatever. So now I got these pulled up, these expire December. So if now I'm on an actual brokerage account, which let me go ahead and do that. So now go back in here, Log out of paper trading. I'm going to log into my Tradevate account. By the way, I'm just going to start that so I have it logged up. Connect my account. Now I'm logged in here on my demo account with a little bit over 50K in the account. Now I'm going to pull up that exact same order entry form. I'm just going to mark it by in one unit, mark it by in. Boom, now we're in. If I was on my demo account and I go to the MES one exclamation point and I try to mark it by in, it says it's a non-tradable symbol, okay? You can trade it on paper trading. You cannot trade it on an actual account, okay? Because 
you actually can't trade this continuous contract here, uh, at least with a live account. So that's if you have that question, you're probably going to run into that question. At least that's there's your answer. So let me go back to my position here. I'm up two dollars and fifty cents. I'm going to go ahead and enter in, or I'm going to put a limit sell here at uh, thirty-eight oh four. See if it hits up five bucks. It'll hit, take me out around five six bucks, whatever the number is. And uh, if it takes me out, great. But in the meantime, there it is. Let's cover what this actually means. So each different contract futures that they, they can trade that they can, they are going to be different. The micro e minis are essentially one tenth the minis. So when you're trading the micros, it's actually really cool for a small account. When you're trading during the trading day, there's a lot more volatility. Trading in after hours, pre market hours, overnight sessions might be a little bit slower unless there's some news coming out. Things don't move as fast. And so these moves are actually very, very, and they might not be enough for, let's say, uh, uh, someone who's looking to, you know, risk a couple hundred to make a couple hundred to a couple thousand or more, depends upon your trading style and, and you know, your risk tolerance and the type of trader you are, right? Are you a brand new beginner looking with a hundred dollar account or are you, you know, very seasoned and experienced? That's what you need to understand when it comes to trading the micros or the minis, whatever you want to do. But each tick, so each 25 cent tick on the micro e mini SP futures in this example is going to move your PL $1.25. Also, make sure you factor in fees from your brokerage account. I believe the fees are like 25 cents or less on uh, Trade of Eight from my uh, brokerage account that I've connected here onto TradingView. But that's what you need to do. We have a video going over how to connect, you know, a platform. We have a couple of different examples. I believe we have interactive brokers, and then I believe we have TradeStation. How to connect those two brokers to TradingView, but it's pretty straightforward. We pretty much showed you guys how to do that. You just log into your account once you already have one outside. And the integrations are pretty darn good. I can't really complain with that. If I jump back in here and I was to log out of this account, if I go here, TradeStation, Interactive Brokers, obviously paper trading is trading use own thing. Trade of eight are the three ones that are the three brokers I have experiences with. And I have to say the executions are pretty good. Are they perfect? I can't say 100% that they're perfect, but they are pretty darn good. And so if you're a scalper looking at every two seconds, it might not be the best idea. You might want to use the actual broker. But if you're someone looking at, let's say, either a bigger picture approach where you're not looking at you know, the one minute chart scalping, this actually is not, the executions work pretty well and it actually keeps things super simple because I really like the TradingView platform to trade. So in a nutshell, that's essentially what you need to know when it comes down to trading futures on TradingView. Make sure you have a contract selected that has a expiration date. And then of course, as you get to that time frame, make sure you refresh and start trading different contracts as time goes on. That is what you need to know. Again, there's also this panel right here, which is the actual just order entry panel, I believe, the order panel. And here's kind of your standard panel that you'll generally see, you know, across most brokers. If you want to enter in stop losses, market buys, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. But for me, I tend to use uh, the DOM panel here this way. It makes it so much easier. It's kind of like that price ladder panel. Uh, I can market buy in, market sell out if I need to, or you know, vice versa. Or then I can also just enter in my orders, for example, you know, as I see fit on this panel. And if they fill, they fill, or I can adjust them, move them up, move them down. And it takes two seconds and, and, and you're, you're all set and ready to go. So that's how it goes when it comes to trading futures on TradingView. Any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Any other specific videos, other questions, or other things that you might want more information on or a detailed video on, we'd be happy to make them. Leave those in the comment section down below. This is the TC Trading Channel. We make trading tutorials like this, so it helps you in your own trading and investing. If you want more videos just like this, consider subscribing and hitting that thumbs up button for more videos in the future. Links to TradingView will be linked down below, 30-day free trial, as well as other awesome brokers links and great resources in the video description and pinned comment down below. Thanks so much. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.